Hey guys, this is Elias with Softly, and in this video I want to show you how to import Metabox custom fields from an XML file using WP All Import. Now guys, in today's video uh, we're going to use this option right here to upload our file directly from our computer. But if you have your file uh, coming from an XML field or URL or something like that, you could use this feature, right? Or you can even use FTP. If your file is uh, hosted in an external server and you have FTP to connect to that server, well, you can do that uh, here in WP Import too. Now, uh, alternatively, uh, and lastly, you can also use this uh, feature to use an existing file uh, that you used previously in another import, right? So, uh, like I said before, we're just going to click on this Upload a File button and upload this file, right? Now, uh, with this, WP Import already has all the data, right? So we need to decide whether we want to create new items or update existing ones. These two are very similar, actually. Uh, the main difference really is that, uh, let me open real quick here. Uh, we don't have any restaurants, but if we had, and we wanted to maybe update them with newer prices, or maybe its rating has changed or whatever, well, we wouldn't be able to do that using this new items import because this will only create new items or update any uh, items that it created if you run it uh, as a time, right? But for existing items that this import didn't create, it won't do. Uh, we will need to use this one instead. Now, guys, I hope this is clear, but if not, just uh, go to our website at wpillimport.com, right? And you will find more info on the different import types here. For now, let's continue. We need to select the post type we want to import, which in this case is restaurants. And we're going to create new restaurants for each record in our data file. So let me continue to step two. And here in step two, we just need to double check that our import file is looking good and that all of the data is the actual data we want to import. Now, uh, we have a couple of things to look at here. The first one is this review panel right here. So if you think your data is looking kind of weird here, well, the first thing you should uh, maybe take a look at is this left panel and make sure that you're using the right element as the root node, right? So in this case, the right one is this one that says restaurant. So if I click it, you can see that the data is looking a lot more uh, complete right now. So uh, this is the first thing. Uh, you need to check that all of these elements are the ones you have in your file. And this is my case. So this is uh, looking good so far. Now, if I scroll down a little bit further, you will see these managed filtering options. Now, what this does is basically filter out some records that maybe you don't want to import for X or Y reasons, right? So uh, say for a minute that you only want to import those restaurants that are located in the city of New York. Right, so you will need to select an element here uh, from this pull down. And as you can see, these are all of the elements contained in our import file, right? So uh, in my case, I have an element called city here. And uh, once you have located the element that you want to filter your products by, you will need a rule. Now these rules uh, are pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, so I'm gonna choose equals. And the value I'm gonna use is New York. All right, so I type that in. I am gonna add this rule. And you can also add multiple ones in case you want to add more complexity to the uh, kind of filter you're uh, using, right? Now, uh, in this example, I don't think uh, that's necessary. So I'm just gonna go with this, just city equals New York. And I'm gonna apply the filters. Now, when you do that, the first thing you will notice is that this uh, weird code is generated. And this weird code is an expat expression. Now, expat will allow us to do all sorts of crazy stuff. So if you know uh, how to use expat, you can write here your own custom expressions and they will work too. Now, if you don't, don't worry about it. You don't need to know what expat is on, or how it works or anything like that because WP Import will take care of all of that for you. Now, the second thing you will notice is that we no longer have uh, 1200 restaurants. Now we have 45 and this is pretty neat because that means uh, that all of these 45 restaurants are the ones located in the city of New York.
right? So if you wanted, you could also delete this rule by clicking on this trash icon. Or if you want to do it from here, you can also delete it like so. And we're back to 1200 restaurants. Now I'm going to import all 1200 just for the kicks of it. And this is fake data. Don't worry about it. If you have a restaurant called the like diner, uh, this is not your restaurant. This is uh, some dummy data we generated it especially for this video. Now I'm going to continue to step three because uh, we're pretty much done here. And here in step three, you will see the same layout uh, you had in the review step, right? Right here. And you will see this is very similar to when you're creating a record in WordPress. Now let's do that. And here you have the title and the description, right? Uh, like so. Then you have the an image box and we will use this one to import the feature image. And finally, we have here our meta box uh, section. So if I enable this, you will see all of the fields, right, contained in your post type. So we have address, street, country, state, city, and neighborhood, and all of these are simple text fields. And as you can see, there is nothing too special about them. Same here, they're just simple text, and they will accept a, a text input. That's pretty much it. Now here in the details tab, we have something more interesting. We have a couple of time picker fields. Then we have a date picker, radios, checkboxes, Right. This is this is a select one. These ones are simple text and radio again. Then we have here the media tab with an image advanced field. And here we have a reviews tab with a Metabox clonable group. And guys, this Metabox clonable group uh, contains three subfields. And if you click on the add more button, it will keep adding more and more uh, groups like so. Now we can import Metabox clonable groups using WPL import, and we will also import all of these other fields, right? So let's go back to WPL import, and as you can see, all of this uh, simple text, like I said before, but this uh, time picker ones, right, will allow you to choose a time from here, this one too, and this is a date picker, so you can do the same. This rating uh, is supposed to be a radio field, but it will show you uh, as a select one. So you can select a value from here too. For the checkbox one, you can select multiple from here. Rest code, same, right? So you get the idea, guys. You can even type in here uh, custom values, like so. And what happens when we do this, right? Because the repeal import will allow you to do that, right? You can even use uh, a combination of static data, like so, and uh, I value from your file. You will build import won't limit you that way. Uh, but the only issue with that is that all 1200 restaurants will have this static data, right? So if you set this uh, to be a time for the opening time, then all restaurants will have that same value, right, here in the uh, opening time field, right? So this is not what we want because we have an opening time here. So I'm going to uh, delete all of this. All right. And all right. Cool. And let's start from the top. And let's just work our way real quick to the Metabox add-on section. Because this is very straightforward, guys. Uh, here we just need to drag and drop this restaurant's name to be the title. But you can also add multiple values. For example, if you want to add here say the city right uh well you can do that and no one will stop you right now um let's drag and drop here the description right and here in the images section i'm just going to use the image feature element now let's preview this to make sure it works from the test and the test was successful so this is a good start now we have a gallery element here, but we're not going to use this in the images section. We're going to use that in the uh, Metabox section, which is right here, right? So let's just move on. We're just going to make sure that this set the first image to the feature image option is enabled. And so it is. So let's continue. And the custom fields area, we're just going to skip it because all of the custom fields we're going to need are created with Metabox and we're going to import Metabox fields using the Metabox import add-on, right? So let's drag and drop the map address here and the street, country, and then state, city, and let's delete this, neighborhood. 
all right now for the opening time i'm gonna drag and drop my value here and uh you don't need to worry too much about the format because as long as it's a php readable format wpl import will be able to translate that to whatever metabox is using to handle your fields right now it will do the same for the date picker too so i'm gonna drag and drop that cool now guys there can be the cases where uh, i don't know your file has a truly weird uh, format that uh, php doesn't support and in that case you can use a php function right here in the function editor to convert that super weird time format or date format to something that php uh, can handle and with that you will be able to import your data this is a very powerful feature in wp import because guys being able to run php functions opens you to a world of possibilities uh, with your data you can even connect to an external server and download some data from there dynamically uh, while your import runs right that's that's super powerful so uh, for now and um, since we're not going to use this feature because we have other videos and great documentation here at wplimport.com on how to run php functions on how to do some crazy stuff with this we're just going to skip it right so let's close this and go back here to our uh, metabox import section right so uh, for the rating i'm gonna set this with xpath right and i have my rating right here but uh, i'm just noticing that we have a slight issue with our rating now guys i'm gonna show you real quick uh why is that uh, if i go here to metabox and uh, check the custom fields we have created uh, we're gonna see here the rating so i'm gonna open that up and you can see that we have a value right here which is five four three two one one and then we have uh, a label right and this is the same for the other uh, radio field we have around there which is um, this one i believe yeah uh, so we have a value which is five four three four five four whatever and then we have the label now how this works is we will need to import either the uh, label or the value for this to work however uh, here in our import file we don't have that exact value and this is one of those cases uh, that i was telling you about guys where maybe you don't have the exact same data uh, you need for your import in your import file right so what we can do here is use a quick php function to maybe remove this little bit uh, of our rating because all of them are like that right so five out of five this one uh, is two out of five and so on and so forth so maybe we can use a str replace function to replace this uh, little bit with nothing so we only get the main number which is what we need now let's do that so i'm gonna open my function editor and I know it, I, I told you guys we won't be needing this, but this is something that can happen when you're importing uh, some data that's coming from a provider, right? Because maybe they have a format that you didn't expect. So it's great that we do it like this. So uh, I'm going to just type in here my function, right? And I'm going to call this function fix rating, right? So I'm going to say data here. Oops that here is uh, gonna return str replace and we're gonna look for um yeah this and we're gonna use nothing to replace that in the data element right so with this we should be good let me save this function copy the name of my function here and here in our rating i'm going to open a square bracket i'm going to paste the name of my function open a parenthesis drag and drop my rating here right close my parenthesis and close my square bracket now this should work but if you want to double check that you can copy that go here to the uh, main content area and paste your function there now let's hit preview and there you go uh you can see we had here in this uh where is it well we can see it let me oh here it is right so you can see here rating it's two out of five 
and this here is giving us a preview of two. This one is three and so on and so forth, right? So here's the rating three or five and it's returning only three. So this format will work for our uh, rating field, right? Because this is the value that Metabox is gonna expect because this is the value that Metabox is gonna expect from us, right? And it will uh, return the label, five stars, four stars, three stars and whatnot. So let's go back to WPL import since we know that this works, let me go back to uh, this two as it was and here we are right so this is gonna work now let's drag and drop the cuisine which is right here cool press code executive chef phone number website now for the price range we do have the right uh, format so let's use that then average price and you know what, actually guys, for the average price, let's do something a little bit cooler, right? So we're going to combine some static data with our price range, right? To create a uh, average price field. Because in this field, we have four here, so it's 40 and over. Uh, but here uh, we have two, so the average price is 20 and over. So it's very similar, right? So we're going to type in here dollar sign. We're going to drag and drop the price range. We're going to add a zero and we're going to type in here and over, right? So this, it's going to generate the same outcome here. And, and we, I, we don't really need to do this, but I want to because it's fun. And to show you guys that you can have a lot of flexibility here with the fields you're using. Now I'm going to drag and drop my gallery. All right, and I'm going to zoom in real quick so you can see, guys, we're using a pipe to separate these two images, right? So we need to tell WPL import which uh, delimiter we're using. Uh, so we type that in here, pipe. And when enable this search through the media library for existing images before importing new images feature. And what this will do is basically tell WPL import like, okay, so I don't want any uh, duplicate images, so please double check each image as it don't as it's unloaded, and if you find an image that already exists in your site, well, don't download a duplicate, but instead use that one. But instead use that one, right? So I'm gonna match this by URL, and you don't need to enable this, I just like it very much because I don't want to clutter my website with potentially a bunch of duplicate images, right? So yeah, let's roll with that. And here we have the reviews, and as I mentioned before, guys, these reviews are uh, a clonable group. Right, let me refresh our member here. So we have our uh, reviews, and this has three subfields, and you can clone this uh, using this button. So we're going to import this Metabox clonable group by clicking on this variable XML button. Now, guys, this is somewhat complex, uh, but I'm going to do my best to uh, go through this. Uh, without entering in too much details, because we have this link here where you can go to our docs on that. And if you go to WPL import, I want to uh, just uh, walk into it and want to know where you can find that. Well, just click on the docs menu, go to import, and from there, search for Metabox, and you will find here the clonable doc, right? Now, uh, the way this works is basically you will need to find the element that's repeating, which in this case is this review, right? Because you can see there are a lot of them under the reviews uh, element. So I'm going to drag and drop this right here and then I'm going to remove these elements all right so we read for each review right which is this element that's repeating for each review we're going to do uh, all of these fields as many times as they are repeating right so it's very simple once you uh, like kind of see it like that so uh, let me drag and drop our reviews name here then the comments and lastly the rating so once we have that data here we need to remove all of this right and and again guys all of this is better explained in our docs so if you have some questions or if maybe you're following this and you are not getting quite the result you were expecting just check out the other videos in your channel or check out our docs at wplimport.com now, if even after that, you still have uh, some questions or maybe you're kind of stuck here, 
and want some help, just don't worry about it and contact or supporting. We will be more than happy to help you out. Now, finally, I'm going to ignore blank fields. And this is a cool feature because if the value of the element or column in your file is blank, it will be ignored. We're going to use this option when some records in your file have a different number of repeating elements than others. So there you have it. This is our case. So let's enable that. Now with this, guys, we have everything we need to import Metabox fields using an XML element, right? So uh, let me scroll down a little bit and jump here into the taxonomy section. So I'm going to enable that and I'm going to drag and drop the cuisine, then the booking speed, right? And finally, the availability. All right. So guys, uh, with this, I believe we're ready because this other restaurant section, uh, it's pretty much some standard WordPress stuff like post status, post dates, comments, the author and whatnot. So let's just jump into step four. And here on step four, we need a unique identifier, guys. So this unique identifier is just a way WP import has of telling one record apart from the other. And this is important because WP import needs to know when it needs to create a new record and when it needs to update an existing record, right? So it will use that unique identifier to know if that record already exists or if maybe it already created that record or not uh, so that's the gist of it but you can read this text if you have some questions and if you don't want to maybe overthink this too much just click on the auto attack button and wpl import will take care of that for you now these other settings are pretty much self-explanatory so if you have some questions just read them right and uh, you can also hover on the question mark and you should be good but uh, they basically control whether you want to create new restaurants from the records present in this import file, or if maybe you want to update the restaurants that already exist with this data or not. And you can even choose which data to update because maybe you don't want to update everything, right? Maybe you only want to import the images or something like that, right? So uh, in this example, we're gonna update everything. So I'm gonna leave it as it was. And we have this option right here to remove or modify restaurants that are no longer present in this import file. And this is pretty cool. And we have a video on this, so you're welcome to click on it and watch it. But it basically means that if this file is coming from a, maybe from an URL or something like that, and this provider of yours is changing and deleting some restaurants for some reason, well, you can click on this and decide what happens with those restaurants that are no longer present here. You can uh, send them to trash, or maybe you can go ahead and delete them. Um, we can do all sorts of crazy stuff here. Now, uh, finally, we have our scheduling options, and this is pretty cool, especially when you combine this with this other feature, because it will allow you to automate your imports, because although WP import makes it very easy to rerun an import, maybe you don't want to do this manually, right? So again, guys, if you want to know more about this, you're welcome to check the other videos in our channel or check out our website at wpillimport.com. For now, I will be ready, so I'm going to confirm and run this. And this is going to take a minute or two while wpillimport downloads uh, all of the images. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's ready. All right, guys, so it seems wpillimport is finished importing our restaurants and has finished to import our Metabox custom fields. So let's see if that's true by going here to restaurants or restaurants. And there you have it. We have 1200 restaurants, which is the number of restaurants we expected. So this is looking good. Um, I believe we can just go uh, here to the front end and select one from here. And you can see uh, everything just out of the box. We have our, our titles, the uh, ratings, some images. So this is looking good. Now let me, uh, let's choose this one. So what's going on here? We have our feature image, which is nice, which is great. Uh, this is the title, the rating, the average price, with, which remember, guys, we actually built a custom field with this. So that's neat. Then the cuisine, the open scenes field, description, the two taxonomies. This is the, uh, the availability and the booking speed. Then we have address, neighborhood, open and close at, price, dress code and whatnot. Then the gallery, which is always a good sign right uh, the address field and the reviews so let's take a look here in the edit restaurant page and we have our title description the two taxonomies three taxonomies actually uh, so uh, then we have our feature image the address fields are looking good then the details and we have uh, the two time fields and the date one two 
ratings looking good remember guys we used a quick php function with this and uh, it seems like it worked so that's cool then cuisine and all of these other fields are looking good too then in the media tab we have our images uh, with the image advanced field and here in the reviews tab we have the metabolic clonable group with all of the data correctly imported right so there you have it guys that's it that's how you import metabox custom fields using an xml file and wpl import now guys uh, if you want to know more about how to import or export other metabox fields or if maybe you're using jet engine or acf to handle that you can do it with wpl import and wpl export too just be sure to check out the other videos in your channel or check out our website at wplimport.com for now thank you for watching and see you next time